everybody. Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, these are the Cocozelle squash that I planted uh, for seed saving. And I've just come over here and noticed, I haven't been over to this garden in actually quite a while. The grass is taking my sweet potatoes over, uh, which I'm not really that concerned about that. But the Cocozelles were my seed savers. And I've got some in here ready to come off. So I'm going to try to see if I can't get in here and get this. Look at that. That one was ready to come off. It's taking on that kind of yellowish, orangish tint there. Now we're going to let these just set for a while. Now when you say set, what are you talking about? Uh, I'll leave them for several days. Uh, may even leave them for a week or so. Um, you know, before I actually try to take the seeds out of them. Because I let them, you know, go ahead and live off of the squash as long as I can. There's another big one down in here, but it's not quite ready. Let me see if I can get it in there where you can see it. It's it's a really big one down in there. It's not quite ready. It's not turned yellowish yet. Let's look down here. The okra's starting. This is Star of David and... Oh, you got one right there. Yeah, they, I've seen that in another day There's or so. They'll a be day ready. or so, they'll be ready. It's just starting. Another big cocozel right in here. We've had no rain, guys. It has just been pitch. <laughs> and you can see the leaves are taking on yeah. the heat. It's getting the them. The heat's getting to them. We have had zero rain. Now, here's another one that's ready to, to pick. See how it's turning that orangish color? Usually when they get like that, they just come right off. And two of these will have more seed than... Oh, man, these right here... That will... last you for years and years. Yeah, these... We'll be, we're glad to get these. All um, right, there's another one big here. Oh, there is, ain't there? It's not quite ready. It needs a little bit more time. It's not time. quite orange. No, it needs a little bit more time. Another day or two. Yeah, in this heat, it probably won't take long. Um... But the cocozelles have done okay. They've done, compared to having absolutely no rain, 100 and, 109 to 117, today was 117 heat index. We, uh, we still will have plenty of seeds. Okay, this is some of the Blue Lake green beans I planted. Now they didn't, a lot of them didn't even come up because of the weather. But there's a few, there's a few green beans on them up under here that's uh going to seed we're gonna leave them for seed it's really uh, too hot here for ooh, green yeah. beans but we thought we'd try it for seed yeah that's all these are just for seed they're not for eating we're in the time of the year now where the garden is just dying out and we're just letting stuff run its course and uh and basically just die out to be honest with you and seed save and seed save that's what like these these are for seed saving that's all right all. now our, this is our Sweet yeah. potatoes we got from Hoss Tools. Yeah, the grass, uh, it's been so dry and so hot, no water. Um, they didn't grow very fast, and the grass is catching up with them. You know, if I had time and it wasn't so hot, I could probably get out here and pull some of the grass. But at the rate it is right now, guys, I'm sitting out here now. I can't hardly breathe because of the heat. Um, it is, let me tell you something. You see that right there on my watch? 621 is still 110 degrees. <laughs> Heat index. Heat index, yeah. It's probably still 95. It's in the, yeah, the mid-90s. 94, 95 at yeah. 630. At 630. And this, these plants, I mean, they do okay in the heat. The sweet potatoes do, but they do need a little bit more rain than what they're getting to make them actually take off. Now, this is, this is three different varieties we got from Hall's Tool. Uh, it looks like the Georgia Jets at the bottom... We're still doing better are than doing any. better than any of the others. The other ones was the Covington and uh, the uh, uh, Centennial, something like that. Yeah, Centennials and Covingtons. The they're purple not, ones are over at Pecan Grove, and they're kicking it. And I see the ground cracking right yonder. When you see that ground cracking like this up under here, it means it's making potatoes. They're making potatoes, but I see cracking on the ground around all of them. Yeah. So they're making sweet potatoes. And I'm not going to panic too much about the grass right now. Every day I'll come out here, I'll probably do like this, pull a few things every so often I'll walk through here. 
It hasn't gone to seed most of it, so it's not like it's a big deal. And it's real small root systems. It's not like it's a massive root system on the grass. The grass is struggling like the sweet potatoes are. Well, Ms. Wanda just pulled up one of our elephant garlics here. Now, uh, look at the cloves on that. That's nice cloves there now. Look at really that. Really good size. There's, there is an adage that if you leave the scape on it, they won't make big cloves. Now, I'm not going to go against that because... Uh, but it did. this one did really good. Look, I mean, look at the... Trying to get them off of here. There Just we go. Pull them that way. They'll fit in my hand. That's how big the cloves are on it. So let's pull some more in. It smells garlicky. Oh yeah. Look how big. Even though they're big cloves, they probably would have been twice this size if we had uh if we had cut the scapes off because yeah. I've, I've tried it in the past they do get a lot bigger we tried to create a garlic bed we didn't want to have to take them all up and we let the seeds go so if the seeds fall down and they come up we're okay with that guys this right here you see these gray rocks right here in this come off our drive come off our driveway this is limestone wherever the limestone was at in here the garlic done way better The corn is starting to take on a drying look. The green is still pretty green, but it's starting to dry. You can see brown in it more. Uh, this is like June the 26th, I believe. We just had a good rain last night. My beans and my peas are doing really good. Uh, everything else out here is pretty much gone except the pineapples and y'all can see I gotta clean around them because the weeds are about to get them. But they're hanging in there, and they're starting to green up in the centers. So I think they're going to be fine. The cucumbers are starting to die from the ground up, but you can see up in the top, we still have blooms. Uh, the heat just took a toll on them the last three or four days. But there's still cucumbers in here. Now this part of the vine, there was like two or three plants here. This one is more gone down here but you can see look at the new growth still going this is part of the big big cucumbers like these down here most of this vine died out but you can see it's starting again these plants are resilient the purple sweet potatoes that i planted in here are starting to bloom i planted a few there and a few right in there. And we pulled all the squash and zucchini and everything else up in here. The white okra is doing amazing. So we're getting okra every day now. And you see, it is looking awesome. So we will have fried okra shortly. The eggplant has kicked into gear and I see a little bug. People ask about bugs all the time. This is one of them you do not want. You do not want this creature on your plant. So, and they love eggplant. And I found them on eggplants. And look at the jelly substance they put out. Yuck. But you want to kill these. Overall, the eggplant's blooming. And now we've got little eggplants on it. We harvested one. It was amazing. Uh, you can see uh, right here, things have eaten into the, but it's that little bug and little beetles. But overall, the leaves look amazing on the eggplant. Danny's tomatoes with the electroculture. Here's another eggplant. You can see we see poop all over the place, so that means somebody is there somewhere. Not sure where. Yep. Here's a different one. Same creature, just in a different stage. Now I saw somebody that's trying to hide here. This is a stink bug. These things stink to high heaven and you do not want them either. You see, he's trying to crawl off. But, you gotta get rid of him. Now he has ruined some of Danny's tomatoes. There's another one right here. These tomatoes have been, they're just looking pitiful. 
even though they have the electric culture we haven't been out here in three days uh, they're still trying to put on baby tomatoes and everything but I see another like four stink bugs right here once stink bugs get a hold this time of the year it's hard to get rid of them all right this one is loaded but you see the heat and disease is starting to get it even with electroculture it did great growing to start with and then up here we've got a tomato worm that has taken over somewhere not sure where he's at or Danny could have got him but the tomato worm does this kind of damage right here so we've got tomatoes here that will come off shortly this one heat and just disease but got a tomato here we've got one tomato off this one bunches of little ones still going we'll let them play out we've got some squash that Danny planted they're not doing very well no electroculture no nothing they're just sitting there the heat's got them the cucumbers that I planted late you see I did not come yesterday <laughs> And it rained and these things get huge here's cucumbers more cucumbers more cucumbers that one's not quite ready all right quite a few cucumbers going on here the bell pepper is looking amazing still the color is good uh, we have this cage around it and it looks awesome no electroculture on it electroculture rod and the cage on the banana peppers they are still doing great and new ones coming on and we're still getting very decent banana peppers Okay, this is the tomatoes with the electroculture rod, and you can see I've still got plenty of tomatoes in there, but the heat and the disease is starting to hit everything in here, but I mean still very good size tomatoes. The one with the electroculture still looks big and reasonably healthy, putting on new blooms. <laughs> I mean, this should be a determinant. It shouldn't be doing that, but it's putting on new blooms. That's crazy. Still got lots of tomatoes in here, good size. And so far, now like that one has a point. This one has a slight point. Some of them have no points on them, but they're healthy. I mean, still, this plant is not gone yet. This is the one without the electroculture. The whole time it has had disease started at the bottom. Uh, you can see it, it too has some blooms. But look at the leaves and stuff. It's got blooms here. So it's blooming too. But look at the disease. And look at the plant compared to this one. Now this one has a few but look at the healthiness of the leaves still compared. That's crazy. And then we have basil. And I do not want it to go to seed, so I pinch the tops out and let it keep going. These are the Henderson green lima beans. You can see small little plants, but have blooms they should produce before long I just did a little short maybe 20 25 foot row here just enough to have some green limas fresh and these are the pink eyed purple holes you want them like this when they're still shiny and easy to shell there's quite a few peas on these two rows so I got to get busy the one thing that we haven't shown yet was the corn. Even though it's standing, you can see some of it leaned over. And inside there, if I zoom up, you can see some leaned over right in here and right in there. Looks like a space. 
We got an animal got in here one night last week, or maybe two nights last week, and did damage in the middle of the field. Not a lot, maybe 20, 25, uh, right in here. They ran just inside this fence line, the, the first row. They had some laid out, three or four. But inside they got five or six here, here, and here, and down at the end on the uh, inside. Um, and two or three on the outside on the other. Danny's been taking those corn stalks, feeding them to the cows, and we still have lots of corn. An amazing white okra harvest also. I see fried okra tonight for supper. I got about maybe three quarters of a bucket of the pink-eyed pulper hole peas. I picked some that are just turning purple in different shades in this because I'm hand shelling. I do have a sheller, but it takes as much time to shell them and clean them as it does to sit down and shell this many. If I had two buckets or more, I would be bringing out the sheller. But I'll hand shell these today. I think that's a pretty good haul for this morning. Y'all, Dan and I talked about your garden ain't gotta be pretty. Once we took everything up, the grass just, wow, that's thunder. The grass went crazy. Uh, we're going to get in here with the um, tiller, till all this up in the next day or so if it doesn't rain and dry out. Leave the sweet potatoes, the eggplant and peppers and tomatoes and okra. These tomatoes were the cherry tomatoes. They'll come out shortly. They're almost running their course. The corn will continue to dry as long as it can. But on your eggplant, your tomatoes, peppers, squash, look for the poop. When you see poop, look for the animal. There's something there. Whether it's stink bugs and worms and like we saw the little beetles and they're there. So look for the poop on your on your tomatoes and stuff. Animal damage, yes, we get it off and on. Even in these, this field, we've got the deer netting. Deer's not bothering it. It's a little creature that can either come under the bottom or climb over the top. The peas, looking great as soon as they're through and the beans will till all this in here we will get right up next to my pineapples i will clean out around them and the pineapples will continue to go the rest of the summer in the greenhouse at um, deep south on the back of the barn we have four pineapples growing right now so we will have fresh pineapples whether these make or not so guys it's looking ominous i gotta go but look for the poop on your plants. See you later from Deep South Homestead.